Hi, and welcome to the Planet Driven Brands podcast. In this show, we will be discussing with our guests how brands they represent can help in the drive to build a better, more sustainable and safer planet. We will highlight brands as drivers of change and the role they play as influencers. How will brands positively impact the planet and its environment? This is what we're going to find out. Do brands actually have any responsibility to change? Planet Driven Brands podcast, episode 29. Today's guest is Bilal Habib, Head of Global Brand Owner Collaboration at SeaGrove. Today we're going to talk about sustainability and circularity within packaging performance. Hi Bilal, thank you so much for coming on to our show. I wonder if you could give us a quick uh, introduction. Hi Nick, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. So I'm Bilal Habib. I work at Ziegberg in the capacity of Head of Brand Owner Collaboration. So what that effectively means is we're a second tier so-called supply partner in the value chain of packaging. And so we don't directly work with brand owners as such. So my role is to connect the capabilities of what our industry can offer to brand owners and make them more aware. What responsibility do brands have in regards to sustainability and circularity? I think brands have quite a big responsibility in some ways because they're putting products out there that consumers consume. And if I just look at a very simple journey of the brand, the way I've understood it, this is just my view. Post-World War II, brands became a source of trust, authenticity, and you name it. And, And then we had this whole phase where brands grew in prominence, mass market and appealing for consumers. And then you start to get all your marketing aspects that, you know, they usually started from a concept or a product idea. We've got what we've got today. And then at some point, the emergence of retailing came through and especially differentiated through fresh products. And that was a niche that they carved out for themselves and got quite a lot of the upper hand. And um, today we've got a nice emergence of, you know, challenger brands, startups and and new ideas that are able to push past the the barriers that we have in, that I've, I've encountered in previous roles where you've got huge, complex, expensive supply chains that you simply can't change overnight. So you've got that, you know, that emergence coming in and then you've now got the area of whole, the whole kind of purpose led approach where brands can emerge for a whole host of things and represent certain things that then manifest themselves through consumer goods. So it's quite a fascinating journey. And and therefore, I think there's a lot of pressure on brands as well. And it's not always fair uh, on brands to, to be the beginning and end all of everything. But yeah, it's, it's hard to say that there is no responsibility at all and I think brands are trying their best to rise to it. Have brands changed though in their attitude in the last five to ten years? Are you seeing a startling movement towards what we would call the right thing to do? In my career I've witnessed at least two attempts by brands to do the right thing but it simply isn't affordable enough long term when the overall system level enablement is lacking. Brands on their own can't afford to do this in a sustained way. You need an entire system that enables this. So my priority here is regulation and waste management processes, as well as infrastructure. This is what I mean by enabling system level change. This is where we need major innovation. The rest of the industry can frankly respond rapidly with sustainable packaging solutions and formats fit for circularity. Ironically, the one area where I think we need simplification is one of the most fragmented aspects of our value chain, waste management. As an example, just look at the confusion in the UK. Different parts of the country have different approaches, frankly driven by the commercial side of things. What I mean here is collection, what can be collected, what can be recycled, what will be recycled, what is sorted. In my own home, we have this confusion all the time. This brings me on to the next main part. We need a circular economy incentivized by attractive returns to make solutions more affordable. So again, waste management, innovation, and a circular economy as a priority will enable major system level change, which will enable brands to do the right thing and drive innovative formats into the market because they can now afford to more sustainably. I'm not pushing blame away. Frankly, we could all have done more. I could have done more. As a packaging professional looking back over 20 years, I could have done a bit more. I could have done a lot more. I'm trying to now. But do I always choose the right solution as a consumer for the planet? Probably not. Can I afford to? In many cases, I can. So there's a lot of work to be done all around to enable brands to do the right thing would be my kind of long answer to your short question. Regulation. Can you frame the way you see regulation working? Yeah, in a very simple way, we've got 
something called EPR fees that are coming, extended producer responsibility fees that are going to be coming into play at various times, some are already there. These will basically start to put a so-called taxation on packaging to start to fund the circular economy because the circular economy isn't a technical thing first and foremost. There's got to be an incentivization across the whole value chain to enable this to become a good source of business and you know, doing good business for good kind of thing, you need whatever strap plan you want to put it on. And until that truly happens, you won't be seeing the full potential of what's out there and what's possible. And I'll give you an example now. I, I see um, a big shift towards paper in many cases. You see a big shift towards recycling what's possible. Frankly speaking, a lot of that that's happening out there is brands trying to do what they can within the framework of what's possible. Now, if the recycling industry would open its doors to a lot more recycling innovation, then the packaging industry can respond with solutions that fit that recycling capability. Mm. That's the simple answer. I love that. You're the first person to talk about recycling innovation, and it, it actually makes perfect sense. I want, I want to pivot a little bit to plastic, because I know, because we've chatted before, that let's, let's not say plastic is 100% a bad thing. It's a controversial topic, but I'm passionate about plastics. It's been around since World War II, I'd say. This is one of the most important materials that we have in our industry today. It's ingrained into everything. And, you know, before we talk about plastics in too much detail, there are some very good sources of information that you can get on RAP, W-R-A-P on their website. You know, this is, this is whole understanding of plastic versus food waste. And I'm talking about consumer goods foods now for a second, not consumer goods in general. If you look at plastics and foods, how they can preserve quality, all the rest of it, you'll find a lot of stats there. The, the problem of food waste is significantly higher than the problem of plastics. Now, I'm not shying away from the responsibility here. Of course, we have one, and I get that. And it's very easy because packaging is very visible. But in factual terms, the amount of plastic and, wet and problems from pa uh, for packaging there are far less than the amount of food waste and the business system around it that's generated. So we've got to think about this as well. And this is a whole industry commercial piece that's, that's involved, you know, where, where you go into the buy two for one and all the rest of it. And I know it's come under fine. I know things are being done about it. But we have a very big problem on, on waste per se, which then can be looked at in more proportion before we solely focus on plastics, yeah? I just want to make sure that that point lands. The website says um, Siegwerk aim is to support the circular economy approach to sustainability. I wonder if you could explain. Absolutely. Well, why did I join Siegwerk? Because it's a fabulous space just really start driving change where it matters. Ziegfurth is a performance packaging solutions company that happens to uh, manufacture and commercialize performance coatings and inks. So with that, you're agnostically covering almost every aspect of packaging because we print on almost everything, which is why it made a lot of sense to start influencing the industry from this perspective. And one of the most complex part of packaging is inks and coating from a toxicity standpoint, from a regulation standpoint and from migration, etc., there's a whole host of things that inks and coatings are, are, are important for to manage from a product safety standpoint and performance. So from this standpoint, the role that our company and our industry and our sector has in enabling packaging performance is significant. Because you are a circular economy-based business. So we are a circular economy based that, business. That, that, has, that, has that always been the case, you know, since day one? I mean, is this, is this something that has evolved with Ziegwerk over the years? It's, it's always been this. The circular economy has always been at the heart of what Ziegwerk does. What we have started to declare more publicly is our shift, our transformation, a very deliberate push towards becoming a circular and digital company by 2025. One of the first companies that has put a very deliberate measure in here, we have now installed and set up a dedicated circular economy hub to help transform not only Ziegfeld, but also parts of the industry towards this. Packaging systems today are there for a reason. They drive a performance attribute. They fulfill a need. If you shift from these packaging systems to different packaging systems that are simpler to recycle, you may be potentially foregoing, at least on paper, some of the performance characteristics or attributes that those packaging systems today fulfill. So what, what I want to basically really highlight on this podcast is Stop giving brands such a hard time. Yes, be demanding. Yes, push us all in the industry to do something. But let's all get a bit more realistic and, and, and just give ourselves time to do the right thing. Otherwise, a lot of us will be pushed into actionism 
that may or may not do good for the environment ultimately you know yeah that's a brilliant way to finish Thank we you really so get it you know we really get it we know what has to be done we're doing it we've been doing it for years but let's all you know put our hands up and not just blame one particular industry for this issue that we're in we're all in it together brilliant i love it when people get passionate but that was really really great i loved it thank you so much for coming on our show thank you as well nick and yeah it was, it was a pleasure brilliant thanks very much you look after yourself you too See ya. Bye. thank you for listening we hope you enjoyed the show the planet driven brands podcast is the brainchild and copyright of nick jones and is broadcast in partnership with the planetsagency.com Planets Agency is a partnership of consultants and communications experts. We build planet-driven brands. During the series of shows, we'll be hearing from more experts and we would love for you to be involved. Please do comment or come back to us with questions. We'll be happy to engage. If you wish to be notified when our episodes are broadcast, please subscribe on the website. If you'd like to be part of the show, we'd love to hear from you. We look forward to many more entertaining episodes. Thanks again for listening.